Good afternoon, everyone. i um, coming to you guys with a tutorial on how to kind of make a logo kind of blend with the, the natural background. Um, typically, I like to use uh, photos like this, like a nature photo or an architecture style photo, you know, something that has a little bit of a effect to it. Uh, typically, I like to use stuff with solid shapes, not really smoke because that's kind of a little bit harder to kind of pen tool around and, you know, design. So typically I just go to Unsplash. Um, I can leave the link in the description for this website. Awesome website. I highly suggest you use it. You know, typically I like to give credit for the photographers and people who supply this free content for us. Um, again, I downloaded this one by Eugene Golovezov. Um, I'm going to be using this one as an example. So yeah, uh, download that. And the image is huge. Typically they're, they're super high quality images. You can you know, download them and then import them directly into Photoshop and go from there. So I'll uh, show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. So I went ahead and just threw a logo that I made a while back onto here. Um, typically, I like to use white, especially if there's like a dark background. So the white kind of sticks out the most. And you'll see why when I start doing shadows. And uh, yeah, let's, let's hop right into it. So I want to make it a little bit smaller. Um change it up here so give me just a sec here let's make it a little bit smaller just so the the leaves kind of cover a little bit more just like that I used alt and I kind of scroll down with that right there so first thing you're gonna do is open your layers panel on the right side here and what I want to do is I kind of want to duplicate that back layer so I'm going to hit Alt on the keyboard, drag, and throw that over the very top. So it's completely covering the logo. Second thing you want to do, go to Opacity, and drop that down just enough where you can see the logo, but you can also kind of see the the leaves or the you know the, the points that you'll be kind of pen tooling and deleting out. And do a little bit more than that. Let's do 61. Okay. All right, so I'm going to zoom in by holding Alt in the scrolly wheel, zooming all the way in, and immediately I can see the first one that I'm going to go for. I don't really like to kind of use all the leaves because that would just look a little bit weird. I kind of like to do evens and odds, so I'll use this one. I'll ignore this one. I'll use this one and maybe this one. So I kind of play it by you know sight and see which one works best for you. But... For me, I'm going to start with this guy right here. So, go to the left side here. Just grab your pen tool. It'll be this guy right above that T. And what I want to do is just zoom in a little bit more. Try to be as accurate as possible. I kind of like to just, since it's a leaf and a really rough edge, just kind of follow those cracks around it. Just like that. Doesn't have to be exact for this part right here since we're not going to be cutting this part right here, but just using an example. And just keep following it around. Okay. All right, so I'm going to hit a new layer right here. I'm going to right click, make selection. Okay. And then I am going to click this little guy right here. Right click, layer via cut. Oh, sorry, you have to make sure this is selected. This, uh, the image that you're cutting from, make sure that's selected. Layer via cut. So if I delete this, I still have this little layer that I initially cut from it. So, I'm going to do the same thing with the other guys. I'm going to go and pen tool those. And the next one I'm doing is this one right here. Again, Alt and scrolly will you zoom in. And make sure the pen tool is selected. And just go over this guy as well. And for educational purposes, I'm not really trying to be exact. I'm just trying to get the point across on how you should do this. Take as much time as you guys need to fully get that taken care of. And same thing, 
to make sure this is selected right oh, sorry the the main one that we use is selected right here right click make selection okay left right here rectangular marquee tool click on that make sure you're still on this image that you're cutting from right click cut okay and let's see if I want to do any more I might I might throw this guy in here as well just because I think that'll look pretty good so again back to this guy right here go back to the pen tool and this one looks pretty good doesn't look like I really need to do too much to this guy okay right click make selection okay marquee tool make sure on the the correct layer layer via cut okay so we don't need that layer anymore get rid of the main layer that we've been cutting from go ahead and delete that you really don't need that now what I want to do is I want to merge all of these guys right here just so you kind of have um, everything together so we can go ahead and change the opacity back I like to go ahead and change those individually back so 61 to 100 percent 61 to 100 percent 61 to 100 percent so now you're kind of getting the feel of it being in that background um, of the of this stock image that we found on Unsplash. But what we're going to do next is kind of the crucial point that makes it kind of blend in, makes it kind of look like it was initially there to begin with. So what I want to do now is I want to merge all these layers. You do that by selecting one, holding control, control, and then right click. Merge layers. So now they're all one and you can delete these if you wanted to and so on. Okay. Secondly, we're going to add a shadow to it. So this is the final, you know, piece de resistance, the final icing on the cake here. So what we're going to do here is select, so control, and then left click on this guy right here. So it kind of highlights the original logo. So what we're going to do create a new layer bring that layer between the layers that we cut and the logo okay secondly go to the left side here and grab the brush tool now we want to adjust our brush so it's not too big but I, you want it to have a lot of kind of um, you know fluff to it so you want it to kind of have a lot of blurriness but we can also adjust that later on so it's not a big deal and thinking about it this way, if light is shining on a leaf or a plant, it's not going to have a solid shadow around it. It's going to have kind of maybe a shadow in one location and a shadow in another location. Looking at this image right now, I can't really tell where the sun is coming from. It looks like it's directly coming from our bird's eye view of this logo. So um, I'm not going to be too stingy on whether or not this shadow is correct. So I'm just going to kind of mess with it a little bit. And obviously you guys can decide for yourselves if that shadow looks good or not and you could always change it so I'm going to hit alt and sorry zoom in just a little bit and then hit alt so I can clearly see where I want this shadow and I'm going to go back and forth and kind of make it where I want it and I'll do a little one on this side just because you don't want it to be you know, just one side and the other side look completely blank. It is obviously going to be a shadow on that side too, but not as strong as the bottom side right here. I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. All you have to do is just go back and forth. And if it's too much, you can always adjust that later, which I'll show you guys. Okay. This one right here, since it's a tip, I'm going to actually zoom in by clicking Alt and scrolling down. And I'm going to make my brush just a little bit smaller so I can very easily follow the lines of this guy right here. Again, it doesn't have to be exact because we're going to do something real quick with that. Okay. So now we kind of have these shadows and you can make them a little bit darker if you'd like to. Okay. All right. Final step of the puzzle or, you know, second to last step here. Um, we are going to go ahead and blur these shadows so it kind of looks like it's a little bit more realistic. So I want to get out of this marquee tool business. 
going to click the marquee tool and just click that and that kind of deletes it out of your system here. And I'm going to go ahead and blur the shadows that I just made. Okay. Make sure the layer is selected. Where is it here? Image. Where is it? Filter. Sorry. Under filter. Blur. Move Gaussian blur. Okay. I'm going to bring it up here. And those shadows are a little bit much for me. But always have preview on, by the way. You definitely want to have that on at all times just so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to hit OK. So you can see it's kind of like a soft tone to it, which is really what I want. And I can actually turn that opacity down just a little bit so it kind of looks more realistic, just like that. And now what I want to do is finalize this piece. Uh, typically, I like to add kind of a, a filter, like a stylized noise to it, so the logo doesn't look like it's completely out of its uh, environment. So what I want to do, button all this up, is I want to merge everything. Just select the top layer, and then select them all, right-click, merge layers. I'm going to have one solid merged layer here. Duplicate the layer. Filter, stylize. Actually, where is it here? Noise, sorry. Filter, noise, add noise. Okay. Now, as you can see in the preview screen right here, um, you can bring up the noise, bring down the noise. You can choose Gaussian or Uniform. And for this tutorial, I'm going to just kind of leave it as Uniform. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit just so it kind of doesn't look too overbearing. Um, Okay, uniform, click OK. If you zoom in, it looks a lot more natural here because everything kind of has this little filter on it just to bring those pieces together. And as you can see, the shadow um, looks a lot more natural there. But yeah, you guys could use this as, you know, maybe a profile picture. If you're a designer, you can use this as you know, a little portfolio piece. If you are a company, you can definitely make your logo stand out, you know, from the background quite a bit by putting this, you know, as a page or, you know, an advertisement. Totally up to you. Um, but again, if you guys liked this tutorial, um, let me know. Uh, leave it a, a like and comment in the description. There will be an Unsplash link, so you guys can go check this stuff out. Um, you guys can check out my Instagram at instagram.com slash goldfield design or just at goldfield design. I post most of my work on there. And again, uh, thank you for listening. Thanks guys.